Okay, so let's keep talking about air masses. And remember, air masses, we generally talk about the characteristic of moisture and temperature. And if you're listening to these in order, you know that in the previous slide we talked about five different air masses. And here they are again. We have continental, tropical air masses. Continental meaning dry, uh, tropical meaning warm. We have continental polar air masses, continental meaning dry, polar meaning cold. Then we have maritime tropical air masses, maritime meaning moist, and tropical meaning warm. And then we have what? Maritime polar air masses, maritime meaning moist, polar meaning cold. And the last one is continental Arctic. Uh, continental meaning dry, Arctic meaning very cold. And I think I explained that there are no, in general, as far as I know, there are no, um, oops, there are no maritime Arctic air masses. And the reason is you just can't get a very cold air mass to have any um, appreciable amount of um, moisture. So these two slides, we're going to actually break, we're going to look at North America again, and we're going to look at it seasonally, and you're going to see there are slight differences in the air masses that can form in the wintertime versus the summertime. So there is our North America, and I love this slide. I think this is neat. I love air masses and fronts. So continental Arctic source region, since it's Arctic, it needs to be uh, near the North Pole, basically, and continental meaning it will be dry. So these are the source region, or this is the general source region for our continental Arctic air masses in the winter. Now what you're gonna see on the next slide when we talk about summer is they don't, we don't have continental Arctic or Arctic air masses in the summertime, makes sense? Then a source region for these continental polar air masses. Now polar is cold and continental is dry. Polar is not as cold as Arctic. Would be kind of in this region of North America. And notice these kind of down arrows are showing you um, kind of how they tend to move. We haven't talked much about why air masses move, but if you kind of remember um, that previous chapter where we talked about kind of the Rossby waves and uh, where we have ridges and troughs, okay, this is a way to kind of, and the jet stream meanders with these Rossby waves, this is kind of a way to get air masses to relocate. So what else do we got? Well, actually we have two, um, sorry, what else do we have? <laughs> actually we have two source regions of maritime polar. Maritime meaning moist. So actually these source regions um, occur over the oceans. We have the Pacific Ocean over here, of course, and the Atlantic Ocean over here. So these provide as good source regions for maritime or moist air masses. And if they're North Pacific and North Atlantic, they're gonna be polar. So see how we get two source regions of uh, maritime polar um, air masses. Then we get to our maritime tropical air masses. And actually, again, we have two source regions, or three if you kind of count the Gulf of Mexico. Um, this region is kind of being a little bit different than this region. Okay, maritime tropical, maritime meaning moist, so it's going to be over a large body of water again. Over here, as I was mentioning, we kind of think of these, this as the gulf is kind of, um, oops, spell that right, where the gulf is kind of um, being a source region for these maritime tropical air masses. And here, this would be the Atlantic, okay? And then another source of maritime tropical air masses would be over here in the Pacific. Yeah, very cool. Now let's compare that winter to summer. And it's very, it's similar. But notice I'm gonna go ahead and start out with these uh, northern air masses. And notice we do not have continental Arctic air masses in general in the summertime, but we do have continental polar air masses. Continental meaning dry, um, because this air has dwelled over land and polar meaning cold, and because this is upper uh, air that has a source region at upper latitudes. Um, then this is similar. I'll just go ahead and put both of these up here. During the summertime, we do have a source of maritime polar air masses, again, coming from the Pacific and coming from the Atlantic. Atlantic. Uh, 
Um, then moving down to our maritime tropical air masses. And as we talk about um, severe weather, our uh, thunderstorms and thunderstorms that may or may not spawn tornadoes and hail and, and lightning, um, we're going to see that that air comes from, um, that air is maritime, moist, and warm, tropical. So maritime, tropical air masses, again, we have two source regions down here, um, the Pacific. And if you kind of want to break this up into the Gulf, that you can, source region, and the Atlantic. Uh, now, one more, um, one more air mass, or uh, well, an air mass that we see in the summer but we don't see in the winter is right here. Notice one of the differences, another difference between this map, summer and the winter. Not only are we missing our continental Arctic, but we have added our continental tropical. Now, what is a continental tropical air mass? Well, continental means it's relatively dry, and tropical means that it's warm or in this case, designated as hot. And so what you're looking at here is part of Mexico, but part of kind of our, I guess, do we call this the Southwest kind of United States? Okay, so that's a source region for continental tropical air. Here at the end of this section, or I guess I should say at the end of the next section when we talk about air masses meeting, we're gonna actually see that we have some interesting consequences as this dry, warmer, hot air meets this, uh, this moist, warm air. So notice again that in the summertime we pick up continental tropical air mass, uh, masses formed in this source region here. Well, air masses that move, you know, warm air masses that move north in the south, excuse me, in the northern hemisphere, or cold air masses that move south in the northern hemisphere, they, they will be modified. What they'll do is basically as they are on the move, and again, why do they move? Remember, I guess in my mind, I kind of think of them moving along with um, kind of these Rossby waves because we said that this meandering, actually one of the things it does is to help transport cold air towards the equator and warm air um, towards the poles. So air masses move and as they move they pick on the, they lose part of their characteristics. Um, they pick on the, um, the characteristics of the air of the, excuse me, not the air, they pick up the characteristics of the land they're moving over. Okay, um, Air masses impart a change to the location they move Okay, and the air mass will become modified as it gives up some of its moisture or its heat. So I like this slide. I think it does a good job. For example, let's just say we have a cold, not very cold, but just a cold, dry air mass. So what that a dry is going to be C for continental. Let's go ahead and give it P for cold. So this is a continental polar air mass moving from the north uh, towards the equator. And check out the temperature. That's the only characteristic we're tracking here. Um, by the way, as this air mass moves south, sometimes, uh, well, I guess I should say, locations that are hit by this air mass experience weather associated with that air mass. And that's just generally what we call, um, if, if our weather changes because an air mass moves in, we call that air mass weather. <laughs> so let's check out this air mass as it moves south. It starts as negative 46 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't off the top of my head know what that means in Fahrenheit, but that's cold. Okay. Um, notice when it gets to Winnipeg, it has um, lost some of that coldness. <laughs> it has actually heated. It's picked up some heat. Um, it's changed its temperature. We would still call it a continental polar air mass on the move, but it's become slightly modified. Now it's ne only, only negative 33 degrees Celsius. Okay, it gets to Sioux Falls, uh, Omaha. I'm kind of wondering now if this is more of a um, continental Arctic air mass. That looks pretty darn cold. Put a question mark, continental Arctic. Okay. Um, notice the difference between Arctic and polar is just cold versus very cold. So anyway, notice that it is warmed up from negative 46 to negative 23 uh, uh, degrees by the time it, it meets, gets to 
Omaha. Again, would we still this call this a continental uh, polar or continental Arctic air mass? Yes. But has it become modified? Yes. Okay, Wichita, negative 18 degrees Celsius. Uh, Oklahoma City, negative 15 degrees Celsius. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Dallas, you know, negative 9 degrees Celsius. Is that cold for Dallas? Yeah. Would they be experiencing what we call air mass weather? Uh, yeah, that they are under the influence of a continental Arctic, I would go ahead and say at this point, air mass. Uh, Houston, negative 4 degrees Celsius. And then, um, it's funny down here, notice how much modification has happened. Now it's at a whopping 10 degrees Celsius for uh, this location in Mexico, it looks like. Okay, it's at a, at a whopping 10 degrees Celsius at Tampico. And you're like, well, would we still call that the influence of a continental Arctic air mass? I'm not sure. It has definitely changed its temperature characteristic as it has moved south. We call that air mass modification. So here's a table from your uh, textbook. I think it does a really good job of looking at the five different air masses, their source region. This third column, uh, again, is telling you kind of um, the general uh, temperature and moisture of the source region. Um, this talks about stability. Now, I think you have a homework question that asks you to look at the different um, the different air masses and describe their stability. So this this uh, table might help you. And then the last column is what sort of weather would you expect with that particular air mass? So starting out with uh, continental Arctic air masses. Now again, some, some textbooks would probably simply call this an Arctic air mass. Very cold and it's always going to be dry. Generally stable. Um, continental polar air masses, you can kind of see the source region, they tend to be stable also. Maritime polar um, air masses. Now we said there's two source regions, North Pacific, uh, Northwestern Atlantic, and notice that because there is some moist, because they are moist, actually, we have a certain degree of instability associated with these air masses. I wonder why my pen is not working. Um, okay, continental tropical air mass. Now remember, that's the only one that happens, that only happens in the summertime. And um, continental meaning dry, tropical meaning warm or hot. And even though it's dry, it is generally unstable. And remember when we talked about stability here, what we're talking about is that continental tropical air tends to want to rise. Uh, then we move on to the two maritime tropical um, air masses. Actually, are there three here? I'm not sure. Well, no. notice that actually combining the uh, Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico here, notice that these have both moisture, which tends to make an air mass unstable, and they're warm, which also makes it unstable. So notice that um, the maritime tropical air masses are always unstable. 